Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're sorry about the un, uh, the inconvenience. Amen. But anyhow, welcome to the Spiritual Lunchbox. I am your chef for today. On today's menu, we will be serving a dish um, that many has turned this dish down. There could be several reasons why they have not tried this dish. And if they did try it, why didn't they stick with it? There are many, such as you and I, have been in that place where we have sat down with others telling them about a problem that is too great for you to come from under and it's wearing you out in such a way that it begins to affect your way of thinking and on how to deal with that problem. Now I want you to hang on with me now because we are going to go uh, directly to the menu and then we are going to uh, start our recipe to prepare a man this uh, today's dish. But anyway, at some time, um, going to the wrong person does not make anything better. If not, if nothing else, you should be making it, or you could be making it worse for you, depending upon who you are telling it to, because your information about you is to be kept among you and the individual that you're telling it to. Because if they are a true friend, and, 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 and listen, and I don't mind sticking closer to you and to help you get an answer for your situation. We all have had and will have problems in this life. And, and it does not matter who you are. There is no way of getting around it. You will have to face it. But this I know, you can be very sure, you can bank on this, you can, I guarantee you this, that this I know, that if you try to face it alone, it will eventually kill you by sapping out of you that one thing that ties you to the one who has the power to deal with your problem. Now, I do believe that the Lord has individual or human being or person that he can uh, station in a place, amen, to help you or point you in the right direction. But we all, we all deal with problems in our life. And many times we get caught up in a system that will work against us, especially when uh, you're trying to do the right thing. And even in doing the right thing in our walk with the Lord, no, he does. Opposition will come. I don't know whether you agree with me on that, but opposition will come. And sometimes those opposition will drain the best of us if we did not have the Holy Spirit because he has the power to lead us into not some truth, but all truth. He knows how to guide us through the problems of life and can comfort us in any storms that may come our way. Now that's enough to give God a praise for. He has the power to speak in your storms, words that the storms must obey. We miss the opportunity when we fail to call on him while we are in the storm. Don't fool yourself. Many of us have or had and maybe there is somebody who is just like me or who was just like me when you come out of one storm you look over the horizon and there is another storm on the way what do the believer do it is an old saying uh, if it ain't one thing it is another and many have not survived the other let me tell you why I believe that many have not survived the other storm that is uh, that came their way. Why did they not survive the storm? Every soldier know that he has been given a survival kit to carry with them whenever in combat. If if the soldier gets the survival kit after he or she has gone through basic training and they are not aware of any survival kit up until the day of the battle and you gave it to them and that soldier will probably die in the battle. Why? He or she. Uh huh. They didn't get the survival kit. And they didn't, they're doing the basic training. They didn't get the kit doing the basic training and they wasn't trained on how to use it and operate it after the basic training and the one who has it packed down knows and has full understanding of that survival kit when they follow its instruction and obey it and meet what is stored up inside of it 
It will give you the strength to fight and win the battle. Well, yes, it will. It will give you the strength to fight and win the battle while he gets the victory over that thing, no matter what it is. Did that make any sense to any of you? Let me put it this way. The Holy Spirit is a survival kit that is able to help you in that time of trouble. And my friend, trouble will come. But when it do comes, look toward the hills from which comes your help. That help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. And my brothers and sisters, I can testify that when I had called upon the Lord, I can truly say he heard my cry, took heed of my call, and sent help. And while in the midst of what I was going through, uh -huh, the battlefield of life, and that's what we go through every day, and I don't care what nobody say, we go through the battlefield of life every day. And I had to come to reality that the devil is using this tool that we're getting ready to serve today as a weapon against the saints of God. But God has an antidote for that. Can I tell you something that many are falling away from? And I do not, and I do not know it. But but, but let me tell you something. Once a person, uh, once a person in love begins to wax cold for the word of God, they will eventually fall away from the faith that they once had before. Let me say it again, if you don't mind. Once a person in love begins to wax cold for the word of God, they will eventually fall away from the faith that they once had before. Your faith is under an attack every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, plus one if it's a leap year, trying to destroy that connection. And you might say, what connection, Chef? Well, let me tell you what connection is that. It is our faith and hope in God and in his son Jesus Christ. The devil wants to destroy that faith in your heart and he will do it by sending stones after stones, hoping that one of those stones will cause you to abandon your faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for your protection. Let me say this, the devil knows something about your faith in the Lord that you seem to not know you know, uh, you know you got faith, but what the use in a person having faith where they don't know how to exercise that faith? James, the apostle in chapter 2, verse 14 says, What do a prophet, my brethren, uh, do a man say he have faith and not works? Can faith save him? That is the question. And then he went on to say in verse 17, even so faith, if it had not worked, is dead, being alone. If faith does not have works behind it, it is dead. God wants you and I to operate off what is known as living faith. Let me say it again. God wants us to operate off of living faith. One that is of the right now, saying unto the Lord, I believe right now. That's called the right now faith. Now faith. How many of you have that right now faith? You know that the one, the writer wrote about in Hebrew 11 and 1, where he starts out saying, now faith is the certain of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Believers must exercise their faith in the Lord, looking for the substance of the things that you have been praying for and the deliverance from the things that have been keeping you bound. He has the substance. It is your faith in him that moves you toward him, looking unto him who is the author and finisher of our faith. It is your faith in him that draws him to you. Oh God, I thank you. He draws, uh -huh, and while you praising him, and you lifting him up, and you magnify him, and you glorify him, even in the midst of a pandemic or chaos. You, you, you doing all you do. You continue in the work of the Lord because your faith is rooted and grounded in Him, and that draws Him to you, uh huh, in that place where you are. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. Diligently. 
Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you think that the spiritual lunch boss is cooking up something in this kitchen and your pastor who feeds your people on Sunday morning and as a, as a pastor myself, sometimes cooking up a meal for the people will not always be something that they have been given unto them uh -huh, that they will accept. But most of the time, the people that reject what is being given unto them, they are coming up against opposition in their life, and they don't know how to handle it. Can I talk to somebody for a little while? Mm -hmm. Just give me about, about seven or eight minutes, and I'll, we'll, we'll just have this dish prepared and served, and so you can go ahead and, and smash it and go back to work and do what you got to do throughout the day. But I promise you, when you eat some of this today, amen, you're going to be getting to lay aside that weight and that sin and that thing that been weighing you down in your mind, in your finance, on your job, in your marriage. Amen. Praise God. It just been weighing you down and you trying to figure out how you're going to handle certain things and how you're going to fix this problem, how you're going to fix that problem. It just seemed like, 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 like Job. Amen. Praise God. In his story that was told about him, if it seemed like if it ain't one thing, it's another. And my brothers and sisters, we are dealing with one thing after another seem like one storm as I said earlier it's over the horizon it keep one after another keep coming up but one thing I do know the storm that can keep on rising if you are rooted and grounded in the law and hold on to God unchanging hand and have the faith in Jesus Christ and the God who gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life amen the enemy wants you to worry about certain things uh -huh. and it's all right for us to worry about some things but when we get into that place of worry and it's taking our eyes off of him uh -huh, and putting our eyes on that thing mm -hmm, it begins to put us into a place what did Jesus say about worry Jesus tells us that worry will steal away our happiness and keep us from pursuing more important goals especially the goals of establish our relationship with the God uh-huh uh-huh yes sir uh-huh that's what that's what the enemy he wants you to worry so you won't amen have that ultimate goal and relationship with the Lord amen he wants to amen he don't want you to establish that relationship with God Jesus said in a language you can better understand a person can worry for years and still not add a single hour to his or her life. Can I say it again? Amen. Jesus said in his language, you can better understand it this way, that a person can worry for years and still not add a single hour to his or her life. Worrying will sap the life out of you. It will drain you physically and it will drain you spiritually. Oh yes it will. It will. Oh yes it will. And it will do it to you. And if you're not careful it will take you down so spiritually uh -huh, of you hearing what the word of God is saying. I come uh -huh, I come to tell somebody here on this afternoon oh come on now. I know for a fact that I am not the only one had been at that place when you wrestle with that spirit of worrying. Somebody ought to shout glory on that. Can I get an amen or can I get a word, word? Uh-huh. And so we have to understand that all of us have come to that place. And I want you to understand that that place, amen, where we have to work or wrestle with that spirit of worrying. And by the time it had passed over, you were drained both physical and spiritual. But God, somebody say, but God, Lord, have mercy, give you a plate this morning. Morning, uh, this afternoon that I'm getting ready to serve you, but God, uh -huh, uh -huh, he have given you a plate last week on the Lord, have mercy, did that help you out for the weekend and brought you up to where you at, Amen. but some of us are still worrying, don't worry about it, uh -huh. worrying will kill your appetite for Jesus, it will kill your appetite, steal your faith, rob you of your hope, and stop your ears from hearing what the Holy Spirit has to say to you about the situation that you're in and believe you me he can talk yes sir that holy spirit can talk uh-huh yes sir and let you know uh-huh uh -huh, those who has the concept that when the holy spirit speaks unto them on what to do about a situation he not only speaks to us he then turns around and lead us into the truth of what the lord jesus christ said for us to do in order to get out from under that worry i got to get out of here god won't 
for us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be free to worship him, to magnify him, to glorify him, to lift him up. Somebody ought to help me say hallelujah. Yes, sir. God wants us to worship him. Amen. He don't want us to be under any yoke of bondage and worrying. Amen. Amen. And worrying is a bondage. Y'all got to help me here. Yeah. Worrying is a bondage that will weigh you down, down, down down. Amen. When a believer gets to that place, God is the only one that can and will deliver you in such a way that others cannot. Uh, many, may I say that again, many may not understand how can a person still have a praise, still have a worship, uh -huh, still take the time out to spend with the Lord, continuing in reading his word, uh -huh, and continue, oh God help me, hiding it in their heart because it is from his word, oh Lord, is where he get the energy to feed his soul. And so my brothers and sisters, uh -huh, then you got to understand that there'll come a time that all of us got to spend time in the secret closet, mm -hmm, praying unto him because he has the antidote on how to handle the spirit of worrying. And I, God have mercy, and I too, mm -hmm, I too, I'm one of those in man. No, I need God to handle some spirit, uh -huh, a word that be coming my way. Uh -huh, but you know what this word says, amen, and we're going to get to the main and eat greeters, and then we're going to throw the rest of it in the pot, and we're going to mm, serve this thing so we can get out of here. And to those who don't know, it is a spirit. Yes, that worrying is a spirit. How do you know, Chef? Because it did not come from God. He is against one of, uh -huh, of that. He is against worrying uh -huh, of one of his who is worrying about something. God wants us to come from under every yoke and bondage. Amen. That keep us weighted down. That so besets us and keep us from going forward. God does not like for his children to be worrying about anything. Listen to the writing. Here's the main ingredients. Ah, oh God, I think you hear about three minutes and a half or four minutes. Listen to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And listen to what it says. It said, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request, what? Be made known unto God. Mm -hmm. And then it went on to say that the peace of God with passive all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through who? Christ Jesus. Listen, Listen, God wants our heart. Yes, sir. He wants our heart toward him. Oh, oh God, I got to say it again. That feel it down in my heart. Uh -huh. God, mm -hmm, he wants our heart toward him. Not sometime, but at all time. Somebody say all time. Yes, all time. Even when we are not supposed to be where we are not supposed to be. And we as believers in the body of Christ should not be under that yoke of worry. When Jesus had called us to freedom, tell somebody I'm free. Whom the sun set free is free indeed and that freedom covers everything every every in your life and uh -huh, every every in your mind every every in your heart every every in your soul every every in that spirit amen praise god uh -huh. that freedom cover every fiber being of your life because whom the sun set free is free indeed it is the devil that don't want you to know that you're free so he keep you worrying at things amen when you can just catch all of your kids upon him because he cares for you God wants you and I freed up from the cares of this life so we can mm -hmm, be ready at any given time to assist those who have fallen under the spirit of worry uh -huh, and having a hard time getting from any under it. The Holy Spirit wants to help you get from under that spirit and get the victory over it. And the only way to get the victory over it is when you have spent some time with Jesus and he has spent some time with you. When you have finished the fellowship with him, there is no way you are going to leave his presence after all that praying, all that fasting, worshiping him, praising him, and so on, and then leave his presence and go back to worrying about that thing again. Worrying will steal away your joy, your happiness, and keep you from pursuing after God. Well, let's put the rest of this recipe in here, and then we're going to close the book on this. Uh -huh. This is what I have come uh, to learn, especially the goal of establishing the relationship. As I say, we cannot add one thing, one word, we cannot add, amen, uh, more time on our life. But listen what the Bible had tells us concerning about worrying, that, that we know that it didn't come from God, so it had to come from the devil. 
and he is using that tool, amen, in these last days as one of the biggest tools that is hidden behind the walls of the mind of those that they seem to be blinded by. But I want you to be alert and understand one thing, amen, that you ain't got to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Go ahead and make your request known unto God. Why? Because he is our father. Where is he? He's in heaven. And he said, ask and it shall be given. Look what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 25. He said, therefore, I say unto you, that uh, take no thought for your life, what, uh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, uh, uh, not yet uh, your body, what you shall put on. It's not life more than me and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air. Uh -huh. I feed birds every day, y'all, sometimes three or four times a day. I love to see them come in and eat the bread, amen, that has been served to them. That's how we ought to be, amen, as people and children of God. When the preacher, your pastor, he's the feeder, amen, amen, God feed him. He stirred it up in the kitchen. He done got it prepared. Sometimes he have to be up all night long, and sometimes after being up all night long, and just when he get ready to prepare the meal, uh-huh, the head chef come in the kitchen and say, hold up, uh -huh. pastor, you're not serving that today. I know I give it to you, but we got something special today. There is somebody sitting out in the dining area need to hear from me who need to be know that they can get up under the blood of Jesus Christ and he'll give it to the past. Amen. Because they're coming in there with worry. Their mind are boggled down. Their heart are burdened down. They're weighted down with sin and they need to eat some plate. Amen. Where they can get the nourishment that can more God give them the script. So he said, therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on. It's not like more than me and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air uh, for they so not neither do they reap nor gather into bonds yet your heavenly father do what he feed them are you not much more better than they uh -huh. which of you uh -huh, by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature mm -hmm. ain't gonna make you grow it's gonna keep you down and the more you worry the more it's gonna take you to an early grave uh -huh. and he said and why take you thought for raiment consider the lily of the field how they grow they tall not neither do they spin and yet I say unto you that even Solomon all his glory was not aware like one of these. Mm -hmm. Wherefore if God so clothed the grass, here we go, of the field which uh, today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Tell somebody you better increase your faith. Therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. Ah, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. When he said, for all these things, the Gentiles see. We have to understand that uh -huh, that anybody uh -huh, who did not accept the holy God of Israel uh -huh, was known as a nation and known as Gentile. Mm -hmm. But thank God we've been grafted in. Uh -huh. We've been pulled in, drawn in uh -huh, because of rejection brought us in. And now we can sit at the dining table uh -huh, and feast on the same thing. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. That they were feasting in in the old. Uh -huh. But God is serving up something new. Uh -huh. Oh, God at his table, mm -hmm. call the plan of salvation. Huh? Tell for take no thoughts for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of thy, the things of itself. Suffice it, it unto day uh -huh, is the evil day of First Peter 5 and 7. Cast all your cares upon him, huh? for he cared for you. I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Matthew 6 and 33 and verse 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness, and all these things shall add, be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, take, take therefore no thought for tomorrow hmm? for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself huh? suffice it unto day hmm? is the evil therefore hmm? for Philippians 4 and 13 one of our favor huh? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me huh? Proverbs chapter 12 verse 25 huh? hey God help me heaven is huh? heaven this is the heart of man huh? make it stoop huh? but a good word make it glad huh? uh -huh. First Peter 5 6 and 7 huh? humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, uh, that he may exalt you in due time. Uh, can I have one minute and 30 seconds? Uh, oh God, hallelujah. Uh, and when you humble yourself, uh, cast all of your cares upon him. Uh, oh God, because he's caring for you. Uh, Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Uh, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Mm, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my uh, I am meek and lowly in heart, and, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Uh, he's saying, come on, you'll find rest uh, from worrying about
about that thing. Why? Because when my yoke is easy and my burden in life. Uh, uh, Matthew 6, 27. Uh, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Uh, somebody said, not me. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. Uh, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Uh, my peace I give unto you. Uh, not as the world give it, give it I unto you. Uh, let not your heart be troubled and neither let it be afraid. Uh, can I give you about four more and I'll close out on that. Uh, uh, Philippians 4, 19. Uh, but my God, somebody said, my God, uh, shall supply all your need uh, according to his riches in glory. How? By Christ Jesus. Uh, Psalm 52 and 25. Uh, Cast thy burden upon the Lord uh, and he shall sustain thee uh, and shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Uh, Luke 1 and 37. Uh, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, and then I'm going to give you this one. Yeah, I'm uh, and that is uh, 1 John 4 and 18. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, therefore, there is no fear in love. Uh, and that's what worry does. Uh, it comes to bring fear to our heart. Uh, it comes to bring fear to our mind. Uh, it comes to bring fear to our soul. Uh, but there is something on the inside. I got to get out of here. Uh, something that you can hold on to. Uh, something that says, Great is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, you don't have to fear uh, because there is no fear in love uh, but perfect love casts out of fear uh, because fear have no torment. Uh, he that fear is not made perfect in love uh, and I stop by to close out on this my brother and sisters. Uh, I thank you for joining us today at the spiritual lunchbox uh, and I hope that this been a happen unto you uh, that when worry comes your way uh, you just hold on and hang on in them uh, you just trust in the God and lean not on your own understanding uh, and if you got to go back and listen to it, man, the spiritual lunchbox recording again, uh, go back and hook up to it again, uh, and let God be God, uh, and let God arise and the enemy be scattered, uh, and so my friend, good day and goodbye, uh, I want to say unto you, hold on and trust in the God, uh, and be anxious for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication, uh, make your request known unto God, uh, and the peace of God is surpassing all understanding. Uh, somebody say, what he gonna do? Uh, he gonna keep you. Uh, he'll keep your mind, uh, your heart, your body, and soul. Uh, and then when they look at you and say, brother, uh, 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 I don't see no worry on your face. Uh, oh yeah, folks can look at you and tell when you're worrying, uh, but they'll see a shine on your face, because uh, that once what was trying to dust the light out inside of you, uh, but you got to let that light shine uh, so others may see the good work in you. Uh, God bless you and good day uh, and may heaven smile upon you uh, and may the grace of God and the sweet communion uh, of his Holy Spirit so ever rest rule and abide in your heart, uh, your soul, your mind and strengthen you uh, in the area of your life uh, and remember on tonight uh, if you're looking for a word uh, you can go ahead and log in uh, Lord have mercy and watch Prince of Peace live stream on tonight uh, there was a man of God I call him the militant midget. But when he stepped forward, he got more dynamite in him that can blow up a whole town. So my brothers and sisters, don't miss the man of God tonight. Pastor J.T. Harrod III. And I guarantee when you get up from that table, you will lay down and sleep good tonight. And so good day and good and bye. And I'll see you 12.30 on Sunday evening. Huh? I feel all right now. Huh? Good day, goodbye.